Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Rida. Uh, welcome to the next video of GI Physiology. Today I would like to talk about swallowing or deglutition. What is swallowing or deglutition? It is a reflux that integrated in our brain in the medulla oblongata in a center called swallowing center or deglutition center. To be specific, in the nucleus of tractus salitoris and nucleus ambiguous. The swallowing is subdivided into three phases. Buccal phase, pharyngeal phase, the most important phase, and the last phase is the esophageal phase. Here I will talk about the buccal phase. Um, a few words to, to be said about this phase. It takes only one second, a voluntary, a voluntary phase, the only voluntary phase of the three. The other two phases are involuntary. All what is happening here that is the tongue is moving upward and backward to push the food balls into the pharynx. The tongue tilts it here to touching and will be covered by the hard palate. This is the soft palate and this is the navel cavity. The tongue will be moving upward and backward to pushing the polis into the pharynx. Let's see the next phase which is the pharyngeal phase and which is the most important phase. The pharyngeal phase. The pharyngeal phase will start at the end of the buccal phase. The buccal phase starts when the tongue is moving upward and backward pushing the foot bolus into the pharynx. Okay, one second voluntary phase. That's all about the buccal phase. When the foot bolus entering the pharynx the start of the pharyngeal phase. Here, a lot of actions will take place. Okay, I will take you step by step through what is exactly happening during this phase. First, uh, the tongue uh, is already tilted upward, touching the hard pad, so the food bolus cannot get out through the oral cavity. The soft palate will be elevated touching the posterior nares, closing the nasal cavity so that the food bolus cannot enter in the nasal cavity. Here is the larynx and its vocal cords. The vocal cords will be approximated the larynx will be moving upward to be covered with the epiglottis. The food bolus cannot get out, the food bolus cannot enter into the nasal cavity, the food bolus cannot go to, into your respiratory tract. So the food bolus where it will go, the food bolus will go to the only opening here which is your esophagus. That's cool but we should apply a rise the pressure in this closed chamber this is just like a closed chamber the tongue closing the oral cavity the soft palate closing the nasal cavity we must rise the pressure inside here by the contraction of the pharyngeal muscle pharyngeal muscle contract pushing the footballs into the esophagus. The larynx will be moving upward and forward in order to give a space for the upper esophageal sphincter to relax in order to receive the food bolus. I will mention also in addition to that there will be something called a reflux apnea. What is the reflux apnea? The reflux apnea mean that is no respiration there is no respiration 
okay so a reflux a reflux apnea no respiration the tongue closing the oral cavity soft palate closing the nasal cavity the larynx uh, the vocal cords will be approximated the larynx will be moving upward and forward to give space for the upper esophageal sphincter to relax and finally the contraction of the pharyngeal muscle muscles pushing the foot bolus into the esophagus the end of the pharyngeal phase let's take a look at the esophageal phase this is the esophageal phase the esophageal phase is started by entering the foot bolus the esophagus as i said the pharyngeal muscle must contract in order to push the foot bolus into the esophagus here this contraction is a peristaltic movement okay the peristaltic movement here will reach the esophagus will be continued at uh, primary peristalsis primary peristalsis contraction above the foot bolus and relaxation below contraction above relaxation below so the foot bolus will be moving 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 and moving till it reaches the stomach okay the final relaxation will tend to open the lower esophageal sphincter pushing the foot bolus into the stomach what a wonderful thing okay what if there were a food remnants like this a little piece of cheese or pizza or something okay a secondary peristalsis a peristaltic movement will occur here just above this food remnant okay it will just acting just like the primary peristalsis contraction above and relaxation below pushing the food remnants into the stomach okay so what is the difference between the primary peristalsis and the secondary peristalsis? The primary peristalsis taking all the lengths of the esophagus, all the lengths of the esophagus from the top till the end. But the, the secondary peristalsis taking locally, taking place locally, just where uh, the place where the food germinants are. To push it okay another different is that the primary peristalsis is weaker than the secondary peristalsis the secondary peristalsis is much stronger than the primary peristalsis um, the primary peristalsis is controlled by the deglutition center or the swallowing center the secondary peristalsis is controlled locally in the myenteric plexus okay in the myenteric plexus uh here okay we have the myenteric plexus uh, releasing acetylcholine to contract and vip and nitri uh, nitric oxide to relax the specific part so the contraction with acetylcholine and the relaxation with BIP contraction above acetylcholine relaxation below VIP acetylcholine VIP acetylcholine VIP acetylcholine VIP until it reaches the stomach so this is the esophageal phase involuntary phase takes 8 seconds